everything that produces money, they're going to be interested in. Avocados are a three billion dollar a year industry. El oro verde, este, este era una región demasiado pobre, demasiado, este, demasiado jodida, se puede decir, verdad? Eh, pues las personas han estado ya mejor económicamente hablando, verdad? But now, Mexican cartels are extorting the local farmers and taking control of the business. It was one of the last businesses that the cartel hadn't infiltrated. Today, people are dying for the fruit that so many people love around the world. This is the full disturbing story of how drug lords are infiltrating the avocado industry today. The Mexican state of Michoacan is the world's number one producer and supplier of avocados. Michoacan has perfect soil and climate to grow the fruit that has become a popular must-have in all North American restaurants and cafes. 400,000 people have jobs insured by the avocado industry in Mexico. Bueno, yo soy una de las personas que a mí me encanta mucho el aguacate. El, la gente aquí vive. Aguacate. Avocado consumption in the United States tripled between 2001 and 2023. Canada imports 100,000 tons of avocados each year. Initially, this was great news for the Michoacan locals. People had jobs and the economy was on the rise. El oro verde, este, este era una región demasiado pobre, demasiado, este, demasiado jodida, se puede decir, ¿verdad? Eh, pues las personas han estado ya mejor económicamente hablando, ¿eh? But as soon as the avocado industry began rising exponentially, cartels like the CJ&G and Knights Templar began forcing their way in. They attacked farmers, stole their fruit, and extorted their business. So farmers began organizing patrol and vigilante groups. Inicialmente nos, nos defendimos con machetes, con palos, con piedras. Cerramos los accesos a nuestras comunidades, les cerramos. Nadie sale y nadie entra. Esa fue nuestra mejor defensa. El día de hoy, pues estamos un poquito diferentes. Over the years, avocado farmers learned to arm themselves and become a part of the avocado wars against the bloody cartels. Gabriel is not a narco or a soldier. He is armed to the teeth and has fortified his home because he's a farmer an avocado farmer. Your orchard is sealed off. You have cameras everywhere and you have guns. It's so hard for me to wrap my head around the, the protection is all because you are growing this delicious fruit. Así es, porque... If you're doing well, they kill you or disappear you or they come and pull you and your family out of your house and they take away your orchard, and they cultivate it, and take all the money. In 2021, avocado farmer Gabriel was ambushed by a big group of cars filled with armed men in the middle of the night. They said they were going to throw a party for us, that we were going to dance to their tunes. What does that mean? They say they are going to throw a party when they are going to disappear a person. That's the kind of threat that keeps you up at night. Gabriel was forced to make a deal with a rival cartel, paying them to protect him and his family from the threatening cartel. Willingly or unwillingly, most avocado farmers in Mexico become a part of the cartels. They either side with them or end up dead. But this only made the cartels more confident that they could have a monopoly over the avocado industry. And as avocados became more and more popular, their prices went up and so did the cartel violence. All this crime is a consequence of the increase of price of avocado. Now all of this has exploded. The extortion, kidnappings, you have to pay for protection. I'm afraid of losing my family or having them lose me. Sadly, the only way to counter the cartel's violence is with more violence. People are arming themselves up, forming vigilante groups, and being on the prowl 24 7-24-7. Ha habido excepciones en las que sí hemos tenido emboscadas. Esa es nuestra labor, seguir haciéndolo. And who are they ambushed by? 
the Jalisco New Generation Cartel, otherwise known as the bloodiest cartel in Mexico today. After the CJNG was formed in 2009, crime in Mexico skyrocketed to unprecedented numbers. In 2017, the murder rate peaked at just over 31,000 people. And as the government is trying to control the situation, the notorious CJNG is only getting more violent. Cartel de Jalisco Nueva Generacion, CJNG, is the single criminal organization most responsible for these deaths on both sides of the border. The Jalisco New Generation Cartel took the fight to the next level, shooting down a military helicopter with a rocket-propelled grenade. Tonight, the DEA is offering $10 million for information leading to the arrest of the Mexican drug kingpin known as El Mencho. CJNG's power has a snowball effect. The more businesses they control, the more violent they get, intimidating other businesses into submission. And their latest target, is the Mexican government itself. Cartel Jalisco, they are very well consolidated as one group. And so that means that they can really put up really organized attacks against the Mexican government. And all that violence is only to have leverage in the negotiations with the um, government, with politicians, right? It truly seems like in this relationship, CJNG is in charge. They create this chaos. To, to, to go and sit with a local politician and say like, okay, do you want more or shall we negotiate this? It was only a matter of time until the cartel got their greedy hands into the avocado trade too. As of the 2020s, the CJNG is equipped for an all-out war against avocado farmers, and their weapons far exceed those of the poor locals. This is the group that causes the most terror, the Jalisco New Generation Cartel and they are armed for this war. Known by their Spanish acronym CJNG, they are equipped with military weaponry, grenade launchers, drones that drop bombs. They're using booby traps, landmines, and these homemade armored trucks called monsters. Their currency is fear. And with every chance they get in front of a camera, they want people to know that fear is the only language they know. In 2019, the CJNG invaded Uruapan to take control of its booming avocado industry. Within a few days, they left 19 membered bodies all across town. Six of them were left in from a bridge. Imagine seeing this scene in real life. Some passers-by were children. For the CJNG, this is just a business maneuver. Everything that produces money, they're going to be interested in. They're going to scare those, uh, those people. They're going to take the lands, their houses, everything they own. Yeah. By leaving bodies out in the open, they not only send the message that they're in charge, but they also threaten everyone else into submission. If you're an avocado farmer and you see your fellow farmers dead, you're gonna wanna surrender your farm. There's also the easier way, where cartels first extort the business before taking over. Uh, in Michoacan, the avocado industry, first they start like taxing them with like 10% of their gains. And then they say like, why is it not easier just to take over? Give me like the property titles or I, or I will kidnap your daughter. I will uh, extort you. If you don't, I'm going to shoot you. And that's what happened. They're taking over. So where are the police in this, you ask? Well, the Mexican police have started arranging convoys for the avocado trucks, securing their journey from the farms to the processing plants and all the way to the U.S. border. With this, we ensure that the transfer of the avocado from the orchards to the packing areas is smooth, above all, safe. There are 700 daily operations in Michoacan alone, just for the protection of the avocado industry. Then there's the Mexican military. In some cases, the war between cartels is so bloody that the army has to get involved. In 2019, CJNG claimed the entire city of El Aguaje as they fought the united cartels over territory. The actual residents of El Aguaje fled for their lives. It became a ghost town. De un año para acá, visitantes del Aguaje se convirtió en un pueblo fantasma. Las casas pues ya no son las mismas, todas están balaseadas. Antes aquí es donde estaban los Jaliscos. Esto era la barricada de ellos, todo esto. 
They claimed homes and turned them into cartel headquarters and, of course, claimed all smuggling routes and avocado farms in the region. But a few years later, the Mexican military seized back the town from the CJNG. This is just one way the military is being used. Dozens of men are now stationed all around El Aguaje, making sure the cartel doesn't claim it back. They have to protect the town 24-7, and no one can zone out for even a minute. But here's the sad catch. El Aguaje is still a ghost town. Meanwhile, the CJNG and other ruthless cartels are setting their eyes on new places where the avocado industry is still booming. And according to the residents, the military isn't really doing enough to protect them. They've been dropping bombs from the drones, and we have the military right here, but it doesn't seem like they, they're interested in stopping the other guys from uh, dropping all those bombs. They're dropping drone bombs just over there? Yeah, that just happened today. They dropped like five bombs today. Drones, landmines, and blockades, yes, and kidnappings. It's quite normal. So lords are infiltrating the avocado industry by means of violence and fear. But there's another way, perhaps an even darker way. We often think of the police as a force with only one goal, to protect the innocent and prevent crime. But the sad truth is, cartels took control of the avocado trade by means of corrupt officials too. The CJNG has people infiltrated all the way to the top, famous politicians and even top dogs in the military. When W5 Canada accompanied the Michoacan police general on a mission, someone very close to him sent photos of this to the CJNG. That means that somebody who's working right alongside the commander is presumably getting paid by the cartels. This is kind of a blatant sign of corruption, isn't it? Definitely. If someone inside, someone was there when we were filming, that is working for them. This is something very common. Reportedly, all Mexican cartels pay hefty sums to the government to stay in business. That way, their smuggling routes are protected and their violence goes unpunished. The bigger the cartel, the greater its connections to high-ranking officers and politicians. This way, they always know the authorities' plans and can attack first. Over the last years, several police top dogs were arrested for delivering information straight to the CJNG. The office said Jalisco local police coordinator, Severo Flores Mendoza, provides law enforcement information to CJNG in exchange for bribes. And you know what's even more outrageous? The CJNG claims they're somehow better than all other cartels. Here's a Sicario squad commander talking about their approach to the avocado market. What was previously happening is that the Viagras would store the avocado producers. If people didn't pay up, they got killed. The Jalisco cartel is a cartel that doesn't kidnap. The Jalisco cartel doesn't church quotas. The Jalisco cartel doesn't extort, doesn't steal. On the contrary, what we do is clean up society from all those people. They also claim that they only hurt those who deserve it. But what about the poor avocado farmers? Why do they deserve to die? The reason is simple, for the CJNG to make more money. But they will never admit that. The government receives money from all the cartels. We don't have agreements with the government. And we don't want it either. We don't need it, we can do it all alone. The many officials arrest say otherwise. The avocado industry in Mexico has become a truly bloody, dangerous, and sometimes deadly industry. So many forces clash, trying to exert control over the business. And when the drug lords sweep in, simple farmers find it very hard to defend themselves, especially when the government doesn't do enough. Eh, el aguacate cuesta mucho trabajo producirlo, y no nada más eh, trabajo, sino cuesta organización, cuesta sangre en algunos eh, vidas. In algunos casos. So should we stop buying avocados for fear we're financing the cartels? No demeriten nuestro aguacate, consuman nuestro aguacate y tengan la seguridad que es un aguacate de calidad y que está producido por manos mexicanas, michoacanas e indígenas. Local hands that have learned to defend themselves when nothing else works. Avocado farmers in Mexico now lead a double life as soldiers and vigilantes. Esta es la práctica que hacemos normalmente. Siempre está, nos ha estado acompañando. Por eso, precisamente por el miedo, es que decidimos organizarnos. Si no, pues no hubiéramos organizado nada. As of 2023, avocado farmers and locals are more organized than ever. Slowly, they're arming up and their weapons get more and more serious. It's their only hope against the notorious cartels. 
However, by doing this, they're playing the cartels' game. So will the violence ever stop? Hey, thanks for watching. What are your thoughts on narco avocados? Is there a solution to the never ending conflicts? Write us a thoughtful comment and before you leave, make sure you like and subscribe. See you all next time.